Psalm 78, verse 40. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Next line. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Praise the Lord. The Amplified Version. How often they defied and rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Praise the Lord. And time and again they turned back and tempted God, provoking and incensing the Holy One of Israel. Next line. They remembered not seriously the miracles of the working of his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, the psalmist is talking about the children of God as per the context, the Israelites. The Bible says they remembered not what he did. Meaning a journey that was supposed to take how many days? 12 days. And how many did it take? <laughs> a journey that was supposed to take 12 days took 40 years. Meaning by the mind of God, that ought to only take 12 days. But something by the will of God took men 40 years. The Bible says they tempted and limited the Holy One of Israel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the God that delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh. With multiple, a multiplicity of signs, wonders, and miracles. Beyond reason. Praise the Lord. They saw them. But listen, men, after they are delivered and they leave, the Bible says they remembered not. That sounds strange. Praise the Lord. I mean, they saw all these, things, these miracles in their eyes. They touched them. They saw the plagues. They saw the power of God upon Moses. When they were taken away, the Bible says, they got to a time where they could not even remember the miracles. Now the question is, the scriptures are very clear that it happened. But it came to a time where that happening was erased from their minds. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When we become born again, the Bible says we are partakers. Praise the Lord. We are partakers of the divine nature. We partake the life of God. That means when you become born again, you have the life that makes God God. Listen, the Bible says God is a spirit. The Bible says as many as received him, gave he the power to become the sons of God. That means the moment you are born again, you carry the very life of God. Is that true? Praise the Lord. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? The word of God says so. The word of God says so. Listen, these guys, listen, a cloud hovered over them. They were conscious. Listen, can you imagine men are walking in a desert and there's a cloud lingering? And listen, any man who was not Jewish would be under the sun, but for them, they were under a cloud. God was walking above them. By night, listen, there was a pillar of fire. When it was dark for other men, for these guys, it was light. But the Bible says they got to a place where they remembered not his miracles, they remembered not his hand. Can you imagine? That means something was erased from their mind. Something happened to their mind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It teaches me something. That actually something can really happen and be erased from your mind. Is that possible? It's possible. Something can really happen and be erased from your mind. When we become born again, we have everything that pertains to life and godliness. Praise the Lord. The Bible says all things are yours, not some. All, all means everything with the exclusion of none. Is yours. My God. Praise the Lord. Eh? Is yours. All 
those things, whether Paul, that means the revelation that was on Paul is yours, whether Apollos, the revelation on Apollos was, and everything that concerned him, whether Cephas, all the world, all life, all death, eh? all things present, all things to come. The Bible says, all are yours. Then the guy says, I don't have a job. When that's true. Do you realize? Do you realize? You can say, I don't, I don't have a job. This scripture is yours. Praise the Lord. You see, the Bible, the word of God is true. That's why the scriptures tell us, it says, your word is truth. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. Your word is the reality. That means anything that is not consistent to the word of God is not true. Even though you can see it with your naked eye, it's not true. Are you getting me? Anything, whether you see it physically, but it's not consistent to the word of God, it's not true. That's why what separates us, the Bible says, is truth. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. What separates us is truth. What makes you different, praise the Lord. You see, what people don't understand is this. The man in Christ is a spirit. Do you believe that? Because God is a spirit. And the Bible says you are the sons of God. Praise the Lord. That means when you are born again, you cease being a human being. Is that true? Is that true? Listen, you consist of three things. You are a spirit being with a soul attached to who you really are in a physical body. Do we agree? Do we agree? That means when you're born again, some people think you can be a soul, you can be in the body. Are you, you, no, 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 no. By the scriptures, you're either a spirit, like the Bible says there are two men. The Bible talks about the natural man and the spiritual man. That's all. The Bible says the natural man cannot receive the things of God, neither can he perceive them. That means a witch doctor is a natural man. Ah, he's not spiritual. Listen, this is the difference of a natural man. A natural man cannot receive. That means he doesn't have the capacity. Oh. Now you think about all which doctors you know. Those are natural. They're in the realm of being. Those are natural men. Listen, he says, but the non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God, for they are folly, meaningless and nonsense to him. And he is incapable of knowing them or progressively recognizing, understanding, becoming better and acquainting with them because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 15. It says, but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Praise the Lord. So listen, when you're born again, you are a spiritual man. Now let me explain this. Let me explain this. People confuse being carnal. Listen, that's why if you go to the next verse, I think in chapter 3, Paul now addresses the church of Corinth. Listen, he says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as, as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto the babes in Christ. Listen, I have fed you with milk and no with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. That means, listen, when a baby is young, they carry the capacity to eat solid food, but they have not yet grown, are you getting me? To become able to, to eat solid food. But that does not disqualify them from being human beings. They are just babes in humanity. Are you getting me? They are babes in humanity. Praise the Lord. Their ability, they cannot take on solid food. They can't eat a piece of meat because their system cannot take it. They don't have the capacity for solid meat. Praise the Lord. Next line. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Now listen, Paul is warning. He's not saying you are men. Ah, he's saying you walk as men. 
Paul has not said they are men. Listen to the man who laid foundation for us today. I want you to hear the foundation. This is by the foundational truth. This is not deep. Uh -uh. This is to lay the ground bare for you so that you understand where you come from. Paul uses the word. He says, and walk as men. The Greek word there is anthropos. Those who study anthropology, anthropology is the study of being a human being. So listen, you walk as, are you getting me? Why are you so much into anthropology? Are you getting me? Why do you walk like, you know, let me tell you something. The problem, listen, you find guys, they are professors of anthropology. It's a study of being human. Oh boy, somebody wake up. Listen, Paul is rebuking. This is time to rebuke now. Amplified. It says, for you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh, under the control of ordinary impulses. For as long as there are envying and jealousy and wrangling and functions among you, are you not unspiritual of the flesh, behaving yourselves after a human standard? That means you're not supposed to behave. You see, a carnal man behaves himself after the human standard. And like mere unchanged men, You see a sister dressed very well and you look at her like she thinks she's smart. Are you getting it? That's carnality. That's, you're a carnal being. That's carnality. You're moving by the impulses of the flesh. That's carnality. Somebody said, be it far from me in the name of Jesus. Be it far. That's carnality. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's carnality. You compare yourself with men. The Bible says they compare themselves and listen, became foolish. That means when you compare yourselves in this flesh, that's foolishness. Because the realm where we come from, there's no competition. Uh -uh. The realm we come from is eternal. From everlasting to everlasting. <laughs> that means you can be the best. You can be the best. You are in, the, in, uh, in your realm. The Bible says you're peculiar. That means there's no man like you. That's your identity in the spirit. Listen, listen. No man can be your standard. No, 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 no. What is our standard? Our standard is truth. It's the word of God. Christ is. Men can inspire us. But they are not. We preachers can never be your standard. Men of God can inspire you. They can motivate you. They can be a light in your life, but, you get me? but they are not your standard. Paul told men, he says, as a wise master builder, I was given the grace to lay the foundation for the church. Let every man take heed how he build on what? On this foundation. That means you can build on Paul. Ah, are you getting me? Paul was not saying I'm the standard. He says, you take heed on how you build on this foundation, which is Christ Jesus. That means even Paul is not worried. A spiritual man is like, you build on this and go further, my son. My God, are you getting me? You take this on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The dimensions he was caught up in are not a problem. Can you imagine everything Paul put in the scripture is foundation for you to step on? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So listen, anthropology is the study of being a human being. There are studies for human beings. And then there are studies for spirits. Praise the Lord. That's why sometimes you open the Bible and say, Rabba Kashataya. Because you see something, are you getting me? That stirs up your true nature. You see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The problem isn't this world. Jesus made the statement. And he said, be of good cheer. He said, I have overcome this world. That means your problem isn't rent. Your problem isn't a man. Are you getting me? When you're still in that level, you're still carnal. You have not learned to access where everything is. Are you getting me? Genesis 1, message version. It says, first this, God created the heavens and the earth. Now he defines the heavens as all you see. When you're in the heavenly realm, you see everything. When you're on the earthly plane, it says all you don't see. That means when you want to know that you're on earth, when you see things that are missing, you know that's earth. Hey! When something is missing, remember, hey, 
This is not my home. This is not my home. This is not. That means let me bring it. Let me bring it. Let me bring it. Let me release it. Ah, whenever something is missing. The Bible says our conversation, our manner of life is in heaven. That's why when you understand this gospel, start becoming a bit mad. In this world, as in, let the, the world has, the true mark is they have to say you're mad. Because when you're normal to this world, that means you're not, you have a, you're still a babe. You walk as anthropos, are you getting me? You walk as anthropos. You're an anthropos, are you getting me? Do you know why Paul was rebuking them? They were whining. Me, I'm from Paul. No, 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 no. Apollos is deeper. That is, those are babes, are you getting me, in Christ? They have not seen the bigger picture of the spirit. That Listen, Paul is planting in the spirit realm. Apollos is watering, but God giveth the increase. They are still here on earth, comparing themselves. Are you getting me? Where things are missing. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You're comparing where things are missing. He has more money than me, so you start feeling funny. When you're passing him, you look down. Because you're on earth, praise the Lord. Some people, when they see us in Fanero, guys, they're like, those guys feel. Because, you know, they're on earth. Are you getting <laughs> They don't like us. Not because we preach the wrong gospel, but they look at us and they say, oh my God. They see you and fear. Are you getting me? <laughs> they're like, but you see, you're, you said, you're not from this world. Are you getting me? Responsible women, mothers are here seated. They have left all their business to listen to the word of God. You are not of this world. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, you're not. You're not. Some people are on a soap. You're here. They are watching Pedro. I get it, Pedro. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm not of this world. Some, you know, that thing has to consume your mind. Listen, I was still defining the spirit. Man, the spirit, is tripartite in operation. He's got a soul. You see, God created the soul to be the consciousness of the spirit. When Mary was under the Holy Ghost, when she met Elizabeth, she said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit, praise the Lord, rejoices in God. Are you getting me? She was under the anointing. And she gave us the revelation and the opening of the soul. The soul magnifies what's inside. Are you getting me? The soul where your mind, your will, and emotions is to amplify, are you getting me? The God in you. It's to walk with the consciousness of the God in you. That's the essence of the soul. This body is just a vehicle. Are you getting me? This now, this body, it, it's just used. Do you know a vehicle? You tell a vehicle to go. Except it's smart, praise the Lord. But even, even though it's smart, it's still under technology because a vehicle on its own cannot go anywhere. Praise the Lord. That's why when you become spiritual, you start judging men by the actions of their flesh. He stop. I remember a young man, many years, he's, he's even married now. He came to my office, he said, he said, Pastor Zach, I have one problem. He called me. He said, I have what they call chronic masturbation. I said, what? He said, chronic. I said, you come to my office. Listen, I spent, I think I, don't, I didn't spend more than 10, 20 minutes with him. I just shared. I made him conscious of the righteousness of, he said, I, I made him conscious of who he is. My God. Listen, I gave him a dose. Are you getting me? I just opened the Bible and we were standing. I, you know men, I like men. They don't waste time. We didn't even have to sit. I said, let me come out. I got my Bible. I said, now I'm going to show you something. Open Romans 8. <laughs> I heard him. I said, open. Now I'm going to show you. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Oh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now listen, let me show you the power. Many people think that you can be in Christ Jesus. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? With a consciousness and then walk after. It's impossible. Those are two worlds. You can't live in these two worlds like this. The moment you're conscious that you're in Christ Jesus, you will walk after the Spirit. I opened his mind to that thing. 
And then the next verse I remember, I, he said, I can still remember this. He says, I said, for the law, there's a law now at work in you, sir. I told him, sir, there's a law. It's stronger than the law of gravity. The law of gravity is an imitation, but now there's a law at work in your life. It's called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, this one does not free you. The Bible says it has freed you. There's no process there. It says it has freed you from the law of sin and death. My God, that day, masturbation was abolished. The vehicle could no longer work. The vehicle couldn't. It realized, I heard me. He could no longer do it because of the word. Now, listen, we have guys here now, I think. Stop watching. I, you know, this is a fake. Stop being on your phone. I heard me. No. When you look at your phone with the eyes of the spirit, you will only look for scriptures and godly things. You know, we're not supposed to, you know, let me tell you something. Some people are wasting time. Hey, be careful. Your kids might fall on internet. No, listen, infuse your kids with the word. I get him. That even when they get on internet, they know what to pick. Even when a funny thing comes, they just do this. I get him. Inf listen, listen, we are raising a kind. I feel it. We are raising a different generation. We know the word. Listen, he said, Paul said, he said, know ye not. That your body is the temples of the Holy Ghost. And you're aware. And you're conscious. Now listen, you carry the Holy Ghost in you. Paul didn't say, ah, zip up. Ah. He says, the word there is aid. Aren't you conscious? Right now I'm conscious that I'm in Fenera. I'm conscious that I'm before you. I'm aware. If I acted contrary to my awareness, there would be a problem. Let me tell you, sin has no power in our day. I get him. That's not the problem. It's knowledge. That's why we teach the word of God. We teach the word of God. Listen, I believe, listen, I'm saying this because I feel it right now. In certain days of knowledge and soon are the days and now are the days, there are certain diseases that are going to become extinct because the knowledge, they're going to stop being incurable. They're going to become like flu. When you get, you know, ah, they're going to be, they're, some diseases are going to become like flu because we know too much. We know too much. Somebody hold your head and say, I know too much. Say, I know, I know too much. Rivers, rivers of living water. Flow, I, rivers of life. There's something in me. I mean, listen, believe it, believe it. Say it. Say it. Hey, my kids, you don't know what. Listen, that stuff ended. Listen. He is a spirit. Man is a spirit. He is a spirit. And this is a mindset. It is true. It's a truth infallible. But it's important. Are you getting me? That you're conscious of it. That's where the power is. Listen. These guys were the children of God. Their problem was their mind. Remembered not. They were not conscious. Of the hand of God upon their lives. The hand of God was there. Their problem was they were not conscious. Their brains. There was something wrong with this. That's why the psalmist now says. They tempted the Holy One of Israel. That means he wanted to do too much. He wanted to move them in 12 days. They tempted him to... That's temp that means you don't allow God to do what he ought to do in your life. Not because he can't, but there's a thing that has refused to accept. That's the soul. The mind. That's why now Paul says, hey... He says, be not conformed to this world. Now listen... To show you the difference, if you look at the Old Testament, God reveals himself to Moses. He tells Moses, listen, I've chosen you that you may go and deliver my people. Moses says about how God demonstrates what do you have in your hands, a rod. He throws down a rod, becomes a serpent. He shows him burning bushes to get his attention. Praise the Lord. Moses goes to the king and he says, you know what, I've come before you. That you made free the children of God. And <laughs> I think Pharaoh was like, look at this guy. <laughs> Who does he think he is? What's wrong with him? So the Bible says, And Moses cast down his rod. When Pharaoh saw that, he was not intimidated by the sign. The Bible says he also called his wise men and sorcerers. 
and they also cast down their rods. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us very clearly. It says the rod, are you getting me? Aaron's rod swallowed up all their rods. That means all of them could demonstrate and do, are you getting me? That wonderful sign or wonder or miracle, some of you might call it. But the difference was, at the end of the day, only one rod remained. Are you getting me? Only one. They also did, they also tried, they also imitated. Are you getting me? But only one remained. That was God proving. He said, it doesn't matter. Listen, they're counterfeit things. That's why even the devil can be familiar. He has a familiar thing. Are you getting me? But the devil has no truth in him. Are you getting me? He has no truth in him. The devil does not have truth in him. That's why he said, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you understand me? It means that the nature we carry, carries supremacy, being a spirit, praise the Lord, has absolute authority, are you getting me, above anything that is familiar. That's why I told you in the category of witchcraft and all that, that's why the Bible tells us, suffer not a wish to live. That means if a man comes and does it, as long as the witch, are you getting me, that, when you're a believer, never fear witchcraft. When guys say they're going to do witchcraft, say, bring it on, because they're going to die. Bring it on, they're going to die. Let me tell you, you can't be a witch, a man of God. This, it's not possible. The day you try it, that's the day you die. Simple. This thing has no... Listen, the rod of Aaron swallowed up all the others. Praise the Lord. So, the issue of debate and fighting with the devil and what is no longer... A, listen, by knowledge, it's no longer an issue to discuss. Are you getting me? These things have to settle in your spirit. They have to settle in your spirit. Praise the Lord. They have to settle in your spirit. Because... If you don't understand these things in your mind, then you will limit God. God has given you everything that pertains to godliness, to this life and godliness. It means you lack no good thing. You lack nothing. The day you got born again, you carry a spirit that's perfect in him that has everything. That's why when you go to the scriptures, Romans 12, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. Next line. And be not conformed to this world. The word conformed means this. It means oneself trying to align itself to another thing. Are you getting me? That means aligning yourself to something that's different from your nature. That means when you conform to the world, you are trying to align to what you're not. That's what it means. When people say there's no money and you say it, you're conforming. Are you getting me? There's a breach in the spirit. Something is wrong. Your spirit man, are you getting me? Says that you're above. Are you getting me? This economy. But then in your soul, where your mind is, there's a different communication. So you're trying to align, are you getting me, to what you're not. Because the soul now is trying to incline to the flesh. He says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It means transformation takes how? When a man's mind is renewed. The Greek word there, metamorpho, to change form, to change. Now listen, it says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now listen, the next part is a result. It's not a work. The Bible says that. Are you getting me? It, no, it's, it's not trying to ask you. No, you don't do that. That is a result of a renewed mind. The moment there's a form, there's a formation, there's a change in the mind, something happens that you may be able to dogizomai, the word there, to prove, to prove God's good, ple good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, have you ever gone through these security barriers? You go through a security barrier like this. Tee -tee. Then, then, the, then the sound goes off. Tee -tee. Then you say, ah, is that, what's that? Is it a weapon or is it, it's my mobile phone? What do they do? They touch your pockets and maybe pull out the pocket and check whether it's a phone. So they are proving whether you're, are you getting me? Whether you're saying that that's a mobile phone. They're examining. The word document is to prove is to examine the thing, whether it be true. Now listen, when a man's mind has changed, 
has been renewed, has been transformed. It carries a certain consciousness. The result is God's good, are you getting me? Acceptable, are you getting me? And perfect will. How? You prove it on your own. That means you will test, the Bible says test and see that the Lord is good. Let me tell you, some people's salvation is still a bit marred. They're not sure. Ah. For us, listen, in Fanero, we are sure. We have tested. Are you hearing me? That's why we're here. Some people's salvation is, there, by the way, it's there. Yes, they are saved, but it's there. It's there. It's blurry. No, some people have not tested. Are you hearing me? They have not checked whether these things be true. The Bible says the men in, in Berea, the Bible says we're noble men, nobility. The Bible says they went back and searched whether these things were true. That means you listen to Apostle Grace speak. After that, he says, Meraki, you go back. And listen, and become, listen, you become sure about Meraki. The Bible says when you do that, listen, you will test. Are you getting me? You will see God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. That means, listen, don't fluke a miracle. Ah, you know, sometimes, let me tell you something. Sometimes God can do a, a miracle, a sign around you just to get your attention. You know, some people, when it happens, like, oh my God, God did it, and then they chill. Ah, when you see something extraordinary has happened around your life, go back to the secret place and proof. So that it becomes a continuous thing. Are you getting me? Continuous. Don't fluke. Don't make money today and say, well, I think God, like, looked away and just did this. Are you getting me? And gave me 10 million. I can't imagine. No, 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 you're of this world. The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. Shining brighter and brighter to a perfect day. That means good days should be continuous in your life. Don't think it's a fluke. That's the mind of the world. Ah, ah, ah. Today, if you have a great day, tomorrow is better. But that's salvation. That's why when you understand that principle, make sure that you know the word of God for yourself. Make sure, listen, make sure you have meditated. You have a personal someone. Are you getting me? You listen to Apostle Grace preach or a man of God preach. You listen to someone, then you go and make it your own. Some of you, you listen to Calopsia and you leave it on the pulpit. You don't make Calopsia your own. Praise the Lord. Meraki. How do you impart your spirit on a thing? Listen, when you hear something like that, you have to go back, listen, and be sure and conscious. Now, when you understand this truth, you realize that the only limitation for God's operation in our lives is simple. He has given us everything. The problem is the mind. Simple problem. Simple. There's nothing. Nothing. That means everything here is true. But your mind has refused. And let me tell you something. It takes the Holy Ghost, are you getting me, to receive these things. The Bible talks about a man in the book of Luke. The Bible says, behold, there was a man of God called Simeon. He says he was called Simeon. The Bible says he was a just and devout man. Simeon was a just man, but he was devout. You see, we have a problem. You see, certain people, yes, we are the righteousness of God. Yes, we are just, but they don't carry a discipline. Are you getting me? Because being devout is, you start having a discipline. Are you getting me? Because of your nature. Some people just pray any day. They come to church anyhow. They are not devout. The Bible says, and behold, that means you've got to see this. The Bible says, behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was a just and devout. Comma. The Bible says, waiting for the consolation of Israel. That means that guy's business was to wait. There was something he was waiting. He was waiting to see. And the Bible says, there's a full colon. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. That means it takes the Holy Spirit to wait on God. Are you getting me? It takes a certain power and stability to wait on God. That means you cannot wait on God by your human effort. It takes the anointing to sit in a room and just wait on God. Some of you know it. You know how loud your phone can shout. Even when it's quiet, you think it's... Are you getting me? You don't carry the, I get him. Even when there's no one, you're like, has Jane called? The Bible says this guy was just, he had built a certain discipline. I get him in the things of God. Waiting on God. Apostle Grace last time talked about a place where 
The mind is illuminated by the spirit. There's an illumination. A sudden light has to come from your spirit and illuminate your mind. The Bible says this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. The Bible says the introduction, meaning the reason of that, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. That means it takes the Holy Spirit to wait on God. Praise the Lord. It takes the anointing. It takes God's spirit to wait on him. That means waiting starts, I get in me, by the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Next line. And the Bible says, remarkable. And the Bible says, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. That means he became conscious. That means, I imagine Simeon. He would walk around. He says, if you want to know when I'll die, Christ has to first appear. That means he was conscious of it. Amplified. And it had been divinely revealed and communicated to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. That means that was a truth infallible in the realm of the Spirit, but it was revealed to his mind. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? That's the power of waiting on God. Because, listen, if you're not a man who knows how to wait on God, there are certain things that can never happen in your life. There's a certain surety that you can never have in this life. That you cannot have a certain steadfastness of mind. Because waiting on God means you are waiting, are you getting me, to receive illumination, are you getting me, from your spirit man and to your soul, where your mind is. That means your mind becomes illuminated. It takes the Holy Spirit. That's why... If you don't agree with who you are, you have a problem waiting. If you don't agree that you're a spirit man, you can't wait on God. Because one of the most frustrating things as a believer, when you have understood these truths, is for you to feel so much in you and see so little outside. You, certain men will die, are you getting me? Without fulfilling the purpose of God in their lives. That's one of the saddest things. For me, it will never happen to me. I've refused. Are you getting me? I've, sometimes I tell myself, I said, all you are supposed to do in your life, I will finish by the grace of God. That's one of the saddest things. It's not about having buildings and houses. That's okay. Even unbelievers have them. But it's important that we finish our course. Where Paul says, I have run the good race. I have finished. A man gets into a certain place in this world and says that word in this world. And he knows his part is done. Because that kind of man can only live according to his course. He's not just a Christian there who wants a job, a wife, children. What's the purpose? What's the purpose? What's the course of your life? You see, let me tell you something. It's too late for us to be like that. No, we have gone past it. We now don't live under that level. No, let me tell you. Satisfaction is I have run my race. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have come. I have kept the faith that is it that's our generation men will study about us if christ is not yet back and so we want to finish like those men that has to be that that's our story somebody say it's my story somebody say it's my story listen if you don't understand the bible says if any man wants to be a master he's got to strive you see mastery is firstly the place where you understand that you carry the seed of greatness. That's the firstly the place where you realize that you're not of this world. That means you start seeking, are you getting me, something that is within you. Because your place on this earth is to ensure, are you getting me, that the Bible says, as the waters cover the sea, the Bible says, so shall the knowledge of the glory of God be filled upon this earth. That means there is a certain place in your spirit, praise the Lord, that can only pant, are you getting me, after what's within you, so that you may see it on this earth. That's why he said, occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. We don't speak in tongues wasting time. Ha! Ah, when you're speaking in tongues, you're not just passing because you don't have a job. Ah, you know, you're occupying, you're growing in the realm of the spirit. Rata bahoya. Reba You're growing. You're growing. You're growing. If you go somewhere for an appointment and they delay, you tell it's okay. <laughs> I have better things to do right now. When you're ready, I'll be ready. Raba shataya. Regaba sondehaya. Jibagosa. What? What? You're occupying. You're expanding yourself in that realm where you belong. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? 
Listen, we need to spend more time, are you getting me, in who we really are. There are things men are seeking, are you getting me, they are free. The Bible talks about a woman who had an infirmity, and the Bible says she had seen all manner, all manner of doctors, the Bible says, that she had even become broke. She was looking all over the world to the best doctors for what is freely given. That's why knowledge is expensive. It's expensive. People are paying for what is freely given. The Bible says, and suffered many things of many physicians. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Paul makes a very important statement about the mind. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, 5. Paul makes a very powerful statement. He says, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. Listen, many people want to imitate Christ. The Bible says we are created after the image of Christ. But listen, we have to understand the mind he carried. You want to be like him, but you don't understand the mind he had. So Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Next line. It says, who being in the form of God? Who being in the form of God? You see, the word being, that means Jesus on the earth was conscious. Are you getting me? That he was in the form. That was his mindset. Because the word form in the Greek when you study there, the Bible, it says, it says the way a thing or person strikes the vision of a being. That means Jesus' vision, whenever he envisioned himself, the Bible says, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That means Jesus' consciousness, he walks on this earth knowing that he carries equality with God. That's how in a body he was conscious of that. He says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Praise the Lord. That means when Jesus was in this body, when he's walking on the streets of Nazareth, he was quietly knowing. This is God is in Nazareth right now. When he's passing by Galilee, he waves. He's like, God has waved. Now it's inside, he's quiet. He's not telling them, but it was revealed to Paul. <laughs> Paul, that was the revelation. That means Jesus was feeding 5,000. Guy, He knows that's God. In the body. That was his consciousness. It says, but, now listen, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Now listen, we have a big problem in the body of Christ. Jesus was fully conscious. His mind was fully illuminated and conscious that he was God. But the Bible says he humbled himself and took upon the form. That means he said, no, let me go on earth. He just put on a body. He entered a body, but he was not a body. Are you getting me? And the Bible says, and was made in the likeness of men. Next line. And being found in fashion as a man. That means Jesus was modeling. I, he was not. Even Jesus. He was like, so now they think I'm a man. But he's not. I, that's fashion show. <laughs> Adag, if you get this thing. To tell you that he was a man. The Bible says he went to pray on the mountain. And his disciples departed. And in the fourth hour watch of the night, the Bible says he came down and began walking on water. Now listen, listen. Peter got scared and they said it is a spirit. They were right. That was truth. Eba. That means he was with the father. They were communing. Rabba Sonda. He forgot. He forgot and he said, I need to catch up. He began walking. At that time, he was not in fashion show. Ah, now he was in his real life. He began. My God, I, my, yeah, 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 yeah. I wish you could catch this thing. I wish somebody can catch it. I wish, I wish this thing can sink in you and accept it. Peter's fear. Peter was a, no, I want you to understand. Peter was a fisherman. They knew the laws of water. Then if you ever see any man walking, that's not a man. May it happen to you in the name of Jesus. May they see you at your workplace and say, that's not a man. We didn't know that we had someone like this in our company. 
One time I was in my office, a young lady, Kenyan lady met me in the corridor and said, my God, I saw you in front of you guys are powerful. She said, I, something on her said, I want to be filled by the Holy Ghost. I said, are you sure? She caught me off guard. I said, are you sure? I laid a hand on her. She got slain by the power of God. I waited until she came. I was like, they're about to find out. Are you getting Listen. Sometimes, because there are realms of communion. Are you getting me? That requires certain manifestation. I get him. There are realms. I get him. Let me say that. Every, sometimes we have certain things that we find difficult to say to men. Because listen, every word in the scriptures, are you getting me? By revelation, if it's revealed to you and if you attach divine purpose to it, it has to manifest. Every word in the scripture. The Philip Azota experience was the revelation, are you getting me? And the purpose, the timing of the spirit. Listen, that means when something is revealed to you, are you getting me? And it's attached to purpose. Oh God. Listen, God has to boast, are you getting me? In this world. God wants to do it, are you getting me? In, in the lives of men. Peter mentioned truth. He, in his fear, it was revealed that that's a spirit. Because this man understood the laws of water. He says, no human body can walk on water. He said it. He said it. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. May people start saying you're weird in the name of Jesus. You're different. There's something about you. May, listen, may it be said of you. May they talk about your days. Somebody say it's our generation. When I think of these things, I'm excited about where we're going. I'm excited where we're going. I'm so excited where we're going. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen to the power of the mind. In Genesis 11, Genesis 11, the Bible says in Genesis 11 verse 1, it says, and the Lord said, behold, the whole earth was one language and one speech. And it came to pass that as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shina, and they dwelt their next line. And they said one to another, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime and they were for motor. Next line. And they said, go to, let us build us a city, a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad the face of the whole earth. Next line. And the Lord came down to the city and the tower, which the children of men had built. Now listen. They said, let us build a tower that reaches up to the sky. Their admins, they just said it and imagined it that's all now the bible says and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children not were going to build the bible says had built it that means to god they had finished building god had come to see what they had finished he didn't say to see what they were going to start building ah he's that means the moment they imagined it they said it to god they had finished building oh ah yeah 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 that's why the Bible says, as a man thinks. Now, that is the language of the spirit. That's not human language. Are you getting me? That means in the spirit world, when you imagine and say a thing, it is so. Now, listen, your mind has to be renewed. Are you getting me? Into the steadfastness, into the consciousness of what is. That means your mind, the only place now that's required of stability is the consciousness. That's why the Lord told Joshua, he says, do not let this law depart from your mouth. Don't allow. Let me tell you, your only business, I want you. He says, be strong and courageous. Then he gives him the instruction of how to be strong. He says, do not let the book of the Lord depart from you. I mean, keep the word of God. I get me in your mouth. Talk it. Say it. Imagine it. He says, but thou shalt meditate therein and observe to do according to that which is written in it. And then thou shalt make thy way successful. That means our only place, I get me, is to take a hold of what God has said in his word. That's our true warfare. <laughs> We're not fighting devils. Our true warfare is that, listen, our mind is fully renewed so that it aligns to what is true. The Bible says that the Lord came down to the city that they had built, past tense. Next line. And the Lord came down. Behold, the people is one and they all have one language. And this thing they begin to do. Now, they are going to begin building what is finished. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't build what is not there. We build what is finished. 
That's how these things work. It says, this thing they begin to do now, nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. They have imagined to do. They have imagined, not they have done, they have imagined to do. The consciousness of the mind. Once the man and imagines, my God, we can't stop him. Even God knows it. Next line. Go, let us go down and confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. You see, that's why the Bible says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or imagine. You see, it's ask or imagine according to the power that worketh in thee. That's why the problem sometimes, when you're a man of God, sometimes people come for prayer. And in the spirit being, a man says, I want you to pray for healing. Oh, I need a job or whatever. They say it with their mouth, but they don't have it here in the mind. You can feel it. That means the mind, their imagination and what they're saying, there is a breach. There is a breach. That's why when you go to that level of imagination, that's another level of prayer. That means there's a level where your imagination, are you getting me, becomes a very place of manifestation. That means you don't have to say a thing. Once your mind is aligned, it's deeper. Manifestation, saying a thing, is just the overflow. Are you getting me? Of what is already true here. That's why, let me tell you, we're going to change this world. That's why we're in the word every day. We don't stop. Because what's happening is here. We are trying to align this thing to what is true. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 6, verse 16, the writer makes a very powerful statement. He says, for men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them the end of all strife. He says, where in God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. Now listen, here the writer is talking about God's experience with Abraham. In Genesis 17, I think verse 2, when the Lord appears to Abraham, and says, um, I'll make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Next line. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, Next line. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Next line. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Next line. And I will make thee, listen, exceeding fruitful and i'll make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee okay and i will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a god unto thee and to thy seed after thee that means god made a promise to abraham and to his seed that was the promise praise the lord do you understand me are you with me that's the promise then he goes to Genesis 22. Okay? Genesis 22, I think. Verse, verse 16. Let's go to 16 quickly. And said, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, and for because thou hast done this thing, and, and thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. That means, now listen to me, listen to me. The preceding verse here was the place where God told Abraham to go to the mountain and sacrifice his only son Isaac. The Bible says only son. Are you getting me? And the Bible says Abraham obeyed. He went up. The son asked him if there's wood, there's fire, there's blah, blah. But where is the sacrifice? The Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. Praise the Lord. We know the story. He goes up. He puts the boy on the altar. Raises his hand. That means, now listen. That means in his mind, Abraham killed Isaac. And because he had done that, that means he sacrificed Isaac in the mind. God said, stop. That means you're finished. Ah. You are finished. Stop it. Don't. It's over. I have understood. God was convinced. The man killed. Now go back to 14. Go back where I was. Where I was. Where I was. Go back to where I was. He says, now, now, after that, now listen, he promised in 17. Now he says, the, he has tested the man and the man has killed. 
So Abraham killed Isaac. It's true. By God's standards, he killed. For you don't understand because you know the story in the flesh. But I'm telling you, he killed in the mind. Which had to be consistent with the scripture of the Christ Jesus. Scripture has to be consistent. Praise the Lord. Now listen. And he says that in blessing, I'll bless thee. And in multiplying, I'll multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. No, go back to 16. Now listen. And said by myself, I have sworn. Are you getting me? That means he promised the man in 17. After the test in 22, after he saw that the man actually killed in the mind, he now said, now, I'm, now it's time to swear by you. I've promised, now I'm going to swear. For by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, next line, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying, I'll multiply thy seed, which is Christ. As the stars of the heaven, as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of the enemies. Now listen, that means we have seen where he promised, we have seen where he swore. Let's go back to Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6, give me the amplified version. Start from... Verse 17, my God. It says, and according to God also in his desire to show more convincingly and beyond doubt to those who were to inherit the promise, the unchangeableness of his purpose and plan, and intervened, mediated with an oath. This was so that by two unchangeable things, what are the unchangeable things? His promise and his oath. He says, now listen, I want to settle this thing which it is impossible for God ever to prove false or deceive us, who we who have fled to him for refuge might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp, are you getting me? And hold fast the hope appointed for us and set before us. Next line. Next line. It says, now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. Are you getting me? It cannot sleep, praise the Lord. It cannot break down under whoever steps upon it, a hope that reaches further and enters into the very certainty of his presence within the veil. Now listen, listen. God promised Abraham and he swore. And the Bible says by two immutable things. That's the promise and his oath. King James says to end all strife. That means if you still had any issue, God said, let me end it by swearing. He swore and said, I shall bless you and thy seed. And the Bible says that by the testimony of two, a thing shall be established. God could not swear by any greater. He couldn't. You looked for a man, he couldn't. He said, now I'm going to swear by himself. He said, you know what? I'm going to, listen, I'm going to bless Pastor Zach. This is what he said. I, he promised me. Are you getting me? Then he said, now let me, he said, Pastor Zach, I swear. Put your name, are you getting me? God said, I swear. I see God, I see God the whole, oh, yeah, yeah. He said, I, I swear you'll be great. He said, huh? I swear you, are you getting me? You can't fail. He said, by two immutable things. Because we know God can't lie. He says, but by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Give me an amplified version. There's something I want to show you there. He says, this was so that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath, in which it is impossible for God ever to prove false or deceive us, we who have fled to him for refuge might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast the hope appointed for us and said before us. Next line. Now, now, now. Somebody say now. Somebody say now. Now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. Listen. It's important for you to know that there's an anchor for your mind, your soul. It's important. Well, you need to know this. There are anchors in the, like how there are strongholds. Are you getting me? In the flesh. So are there strongholds in the spirit realm. God put anchors for your soul. He knew that your soul could be unstable sometimes and swing between the flesh. Are you getting me? And the spirit man. He said, now let me give an anchor. Let me swear now. 
That's when men go into courts and swear. I swear solemnly. I'm saying nothing but the truth. Now God also said, now let me do it to you, Pastor Zach. Are you getting me? Somebody put your name. You will never fail. Are you getting me? You will never fail. You will be great in your generation. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. He had to put an anchor. Because he knew that this thing can become unstable. Praise the Lord. Now listen. And he says, now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot sleep and it cannot break under whoever. Now listen to this. Whoever steps out upon it, a hope, and reaches further and enters into the very certainty of the presence within the veil. Next line. Where Jesus has entered in. What's the anchor? Now Jesus has entered the Bible says, within the veil, within the very presence of God. Are you getting me? In for us in advance. I mean, Jesus said, let me come and then you are you getting me? Let me hold his blessing. This thing, I don't want any man to move it. Let me become a forerunner. Praise the Lord. A forerunner having become a high priest. Not for some days. The Bible says forever. After the order. With the rank of Melchizedek. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Man, sometimes you wake up. Before you pray, you're praying. I don't know whether you understand. Be, be, uh, you, you know, some, you, sometimes you, when you say robo, they already were inside. Are you getting me? Sometimes you wake up and you feel blessed. But listen, it was him praying in you that you're blessed. Are you getting me? Then you say, I'm blessed. Are you getting me? Sometimes you're there. And not, not that you're doing anything, but you feel a prompting within. The Bible says, for we have a high priest. You know, one time, I think I was even, I was with my wife actually. We were going somewhere for a wedding. Far. And we we're going with some friends. As we were, they were driving us to this place to meet these people. I got a prompting in the spirit. I began speaking in tongues. You know, there, there's the prompting of the spirit. There are promptings of the spirit. Because there are things that God does that are even beyond what we read, study, pray, even before we decide to pray, there are things. If you're yielded enough, you realize that man, this man was already in the business. Are you getting me even sure? And I got the prompting of the Spirit to pray in tongues. As I began speaking in tongues, I saw an accident. Now, listen. I'm talking about the anchor of the soul. But remember, this comes to men, especially of knowledge. Because the Holy Spirit many times works to the degree of what we know in God. I had said words before like I never die. I can't just die. It became revelation in me. I got a prompting like an accident happening. Then I said in the name of Jesus, it can't happen. I canceled it. And I continued my business. We drove. People wanted to have a drink and what? <clears throat> and everyone gets out of the car. They have drinks. <clears throat> then we get back into the car. So as we had just started moving, The car began swerving. There was no car on the road. But all that happened was I think we entered in a position where it began raining and the car started swerving alone. Uncontrollably. It was not... When I go back, even if you ask them, even the driver doesn't know the reason of why the car began swerving. <clears throat> and I remember immediately this happened. I was about to tell him, don't hit the brakes. But it was too late. I just saw myself speaking in tongues. I remember remembering. That's what they had. For them, one of the ladies behind told me, I heard you as though you were speaking in tongues. For me, I didn't speak in tongues. I spoke the interpretation. I said, it's time to prove your word. Because this is something we dealt with. It's time to prove your word. I got the understanding. Let me tell you something. This is, it sounds like it's mad. And it's okay if you don't understand it. Listen, when people are crashing, usually they shrink their bodies because the car turned, I think, twice. Let me tell you, I felt airbags. The airbags didn't come out of the car. Airbags came. I felt, you know, when you, the, you're going to crash, I felt like me growing bigger. Like something, air had come out of me like this. We flipped twice. Let me tell you, that was the most comfortable fall I've ever had. 
we flipped. I remember I said, is everything okay? Why? Because I had liquid pour on me, but I thought it was maybe blood. But no, it was one of their drinks on me. I said, everybody okay? Everyone said, yes, yes, yes. I said, let me tell you, I got out. You're supposed to be shocked. I started saying, Manta. You know, I, I remember I got out of the car. It was like, because I realized the immutability of his counsel. That's if I went you. Let me tell you. I even really realized that if you're with me, you don't need to understand. I realized that even if men are around me, if they are men, they can't. Because the Bible says he swore by two things. The promise and the oath. He swore. He said, Pastor Zach, any word I say concerning your life is a promise and an oath. I've sworn. You know, when Paul says, he says, be it it says, do not conform to the Son of God, but be transformed by the renewing, that you may prove. Those are moments where you get out and you realize, let me tell you, um, listen, I'm incorruptible. When I say, listen, what I believe is true. Listen, my prayer today is that, listen, your salvation may stop being a wish, I get me, but you start testing it. Why? Because, let me tell you, he has put an anchor of the soul. He put a forerunner. Who is Christ? That every word you believe and say, are you getting me? No man can take. No situation. I want to tell you, no situation, no circumstance. You might be 45. As long as it say, listen, it's a none shall lack her mate. It's enough. But you don't worry. You just say, <laughs> you just say they are gathered. It doesn't matter the situation of your life. That's why he knew that there would be te- te- days of doubt. He knew it. He knew it. He said, no, let, I have to put an anchor of the soul. Let me anchor. Are you getting me? Let me send the forerunner. Who is our high priest? Who is Christ? That's why Amplified says that if any man dares to step on that anchor, (laughs) oh, it doesn't matter what men say. Let me tell you something. Today, God doesn't just want to renew your mind, but God wants to convince your mind that, listen, it's anchored. That what, listen, once the word of God comes your way, it is true. Once he said, listen, listen, it doesn't matter where he said that you have stage four cancer, you have five days. You remember the anchor. <laughs> Are you getting me? I remember many years I have the privilege of being close to Apostle Grace, standing by him. He would talk about things like we're going to shake this world. Then he just says, I'll see you later. That's why, listen. When you're a dreamer, you need certain men around you who believe. When, you see, those are things you only say to people who believe. Sometimes you just need some people, some crazy dreams. You just Because you're in the anchor of the soul, you're believing God for a business. You have seen it. But it's so big that you can't tell anybody. You get the guy, you tell him, you know what? To gain a business. We're going to have a business. We're going to shake Kampala. Then you shake your head and leave. Anchor of the soul. Because, listen, once the mind is transformed the next line becomes that you made proof <laughs> are you getting me that's all that that you made proof i want to encourage somebody listen don't faint don't f- listen don't faint it doesn't matter it's don't faint don't faint you have an anchor of the soul who is our high priest the bible says he's in the heavenlies he has access that means every word said about your life carries access and power that's why the Bible says we have kings and priests unto God. That means we carry the kingly anointing. Why? Our words are powerful. But the priestly reason reveals our access in the heavenlies. That means we have a right to speak those things. There are certain men who say things they don't carry right because they are not in that realm. But we have the right. Let me tell you, you have the right to say crazy things. Let me tell you, he has anchored your soul. He has anchored your soul. He has anchored your soul. He has an- if he said you'll walk, you'll walk. If he said you fly, oh, that word is anchored. There are certain people of you, God spoke, God spoke in your life. Some of you, God spoke in your life and you're fainting on those words. Let me tell you something. Can I say, if God spoke, those words are anchored by him. Those words carry a form. I want someone to just speak in tongues. Listen, every word that he has spoken, every word he speaks to you right now is anchored. Listen, he has made it his business. He has promised and he has sworn to end all strife in your life. Stop striving. 
to end all strife, God ensured that, listen, you would be at peace. It doesn't matter what's in your life. It doesn't matter. You might not have money. It's okay. It's okay. You know what he said? You know what his word says about you? He says, labor not to be rich. Why? Because you're a rich man. You're a rich man. Labor not to be rich. Why? You're a rich man already. You carry the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Listen, those words, no man can take them away from you. Somebody speak some words right now unto God. I feel the presence of God here to confirm, to confirm his word to you. I feel his word, listen, his spirit is here to confirm that he's, he has anchored your soul. He has promised and he has made an oath that all strife may end in your life. Why God promised and so he wanted strife to end in your life. Stop striving, young man. Stop striving. Some people are trying to do what is already theirs because they don't see the results physically. Listen, stop striving. concerning your life all strife ends and you settle it in your heart in your mind that is true I pray that the Holy Ghost confirms it in your life he confirms it in your life he confirms it in your life barrenness ends right now in the name of Jesus barrenness leaves right now in the name of Jesus poverty is no more that's a spirit it ends somebody say amen if you have never given your life to Christ we want to give you the opportunity to make the best decision in your life if you have never given your life to Christ if you want to receive Jesus Christ just lift up your hands and say these words after me Say, Father God, we thank you for raising up Jesus Christ from the dead. And this day we confess him as Lord of our lives. Say, I am born again. I'm a child of God. I have eternal life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a big hand clap of praise.